help us better understand how to navigate our relationships with the women in our lives, whether it's our mother, wife, girlfriend, sister, whoever it is. Weldon, what's up, man? Great day to you, bro. Uh, let me know if you can hear me uh, clearly. Lamb, great day, bro. Great afternoon. So listen, tag somebody. Tag your brother, tag your sister, especially tag the men in your life. I'm going to share something with the fellas today. And ladies, you need to hear this as well, because I think it's going to help you um, better articulate your needs. So let's, uh, let's, let's lean in. Right, I'll give you just a couple more minutes to uh, tag as many people. Share this on your page. Uh, this is a message to husbands and future husbands. <clears throat> and I want to talk about how, fellas, we cannot fix what we didn't found. It'll it'll sound it sounds crazy, but it'll make sense in a moment. We cannot fix what we did not found. One of the things that. Um, One, one of the things that happens as I have become more aware of who I am in my marriage and who my wife is in our marriage. Uh, Lamb, I'm good, bro. One of the things that I am becoming more aware of is the difference and the distinction between how she emotes or expresses her emotions and how I express my emotions. Um... And so we are, we're different. Men and women are just different. And it's not a bad difference, it is just a difference. I talked about this before, but this is a generalization, so please don't, don't write me any letters, don't inbox me. The generalization is this, that women are often more emotionally expressive than men are. Try not to use the term emotional because we all have emotions, but women tend to be more emotionally expressive. I would even dare say emotionally driven than men are. Men tend to be more, less emotional, more logic, right? So we like to think logically, not that women don't, but men are often more led by logic than emotion. It's just how we're wired. It's not a good or bad thing. It's not a bad thing that women are often more emotionally expressive and driven than men. It's not bad at all. It's just how you're wired. So, fellas, I want us to lean in here because there are a couple things I want you to hear. First things first is, um, as men, we can't afford to allow what is going on with her emotionally to impact how we move logically. And I'll say it again and I'll unpack it. We cannot afford as men because we are leaders in our home. We're leaders in our community. We're called to lead our households. We're called to lead our families. And so fellas, we can't afford to allow what's going on. And I'm going to say some things that you may disagree with and I'm okay with that. I don't mean to be offensive at all. But I do mean to be real and truthful and transparent. And so, <clears throat> fellas, at times, the women in our lives can tend to be all over the place emotionally. And it could change from moment to moment, right? And it's just how they are wired. One of the reasons why I think that is, is because women lead with love. They lead with their heart. They are always tuned in to their emotions. They are just always tuned in emotionally. And so as a result, when things are well, it changes their emotion. When things aren't well, it changes their emotions. And so at times, the women in our lives can be, they can be driven by whatever is going on, right? This is not, again, this is not a bad thing. It's how they're wired. 
whereas we men are often a little more logical. So while we do feel what's going on, we don't let that, we, we try not to let it dictate our mood. Now, the reality is if we are with we are if we are with women who are dealing with some emotional shifts, emotional changes, if we're if it's if it's because of her cycle or whatever it is and she is kind of all over the place emotionally, fellas, we can't afford to ride that roller coaster with them. We cannot. We cannot afford to ride the emotional roller coaster with the women in our lives because we have to be sober in our leadership. Does this make sense? And so while they can they can shift, I'm trying to be very careful with my words. While they can shift, while they can move, while they can adjust emotionally, men, we have got to be sober in our leadership. Now <clears throat> Thing I want you fellas to hear, and I had to learn this, is that you cannot, neither is it your responsibility to fix her emotions. You are wasting your time if you're trying to fix her emotions. You cannot. There's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can say. She is not going to change. It is who she is. And the sooner that you own that, the sooner you rest in that, the better off you will be because you can now navigate your life contingent on what you know about her. The Bible says it this way. It says husbands dwell with them according to knowledge. In other words, dwell with them according to what you know about them. I can't have knowledge about you if I don't become a student of who you are. So I've got to pay attention to who you are. And I've got to dwell with you according to knowledge. If I know that you are often driven by emotions and that you can at times be either all over the place or in a mood, what I, what I have to learn how to do is not own that mood as if it was something wrong with me. Or something I've done wrong. Hey Lex, I've got to make sure that I'm not owning what's going on with her. Because what happens is if, if she's in a mood and I have a narrative in my mind and I begin owning what's going on with her, then now I become, I now shift into a mood and I cannot lead effectively. Listen to me fellas, you cannot lead effectively and moody at the same time. I'll say that again. We cannot be effective leaders and moody leaders at the same time. And so we cannot afford, we have got to remain sober. We can't afford to have our moves shift and toss to and fro because we're leading. So having said that, fellas, you have to learn this. You cannot, you won't ever be able to. It is impossible for you to fix her emotions. It's not something you can fix. You can't fix it. And here's the other thing too. We have to learn how to let her be who she is. Because when we question it, right? Well, what's wrong with you? This is listen, I'm preaching to the choir. When I when I what's wrong with you, her? What I'm telling her is that the way that God made you is defective. Does this make sense? So when, because she's wired this way, and because she feels far more than we do at times, I think one of the reasons why the women in our lives are so emotionally driven and can be all, what appears to be all over the place for us emotionally, like that one minute they can be good, the next minute they can snap, right? Is It's not a chemical imbalance. It's that she is... She leads with her heart. And so the smallest things can shift her mood. Whereas we as men cannot afford to have those same shifts and turns as they do. 
you will never be able to fix her emotions. The sooner you own that, the sooner you can now adjust to what's going on with her. Here's why you can never fix her emotions. You can never fix her emotions because you weren't there when they were established. You're not the author and finisher of her faith. You're not the God of her life. Right? So when God was fashioning your wife or your future wife, he wired her a certain way that cannot be fixed. It's impossible. You trying to fix her emotions is you digging a hole that never ends. You're wasting your time. And so since we can't fix the emotions, what we have to learn how to do is be stable in her emotions. And what that looks like is not, you can't own what's going on with her. You cannot. Now I'm gonna say something, fellas. This is going to either make you or break you. It's either gonna cause you to wanna tune out or lean in. You're either gonna agree with me or disagree with me. I'm gonna share some insight with you, some wisdom, some revelation God gave me that will help you. What I found, <coughs> I've been married 18 years, 19 years in April. What I have found in my marriage is that me complaining about what my wife was or was not doing was not changing anything. It wasn't fixing anything. She wasn't getting any better in the areas I thought she would. And here's what I discovered. Her change actually started with me. So me pointing the finger at you're not doing what you need to do. And you're not who you need to be. That was a waste of time. What I had to learn was that because of who I am to her, and in essence, because of who I am in the earth, the change had to start with me. Let me give you Bible so that you'll know I'm not making this stuff up. If you think about it, told us, husbands, I want you to love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. Well, why did he do that? Why did he love us? Why did he love the church so much that he gave himself up for her? Here's why. We, the church, the body of Christ, could not become the church until Christ died. All right? I want you to hear that. I could not become the church until Christ died. You could not become the church. It was his death that opened the door for my eternal life. It was his sacrifice that opened the door for my transformation. It was his, it was him being crucified that opened the door for my change. He then says, now husbands, I want you to be in the earth and to your household where I am. I want, you to, I want you to love her as Christ loved the church. So, fellas, here's what I submit to you. Here's a mystery. The change that you are looking for in her attitude, the change you're looking for in her ways, the change you're looking for in her disposition, the change you're looking for in her actions, it's not going to start with you nagging. <coughs> it's not. It's not going to start with it's not going to start with you fussing. It's not going to start with you demeaning. It's not. What it will start with is you dying. Your sacrifice and your death and the death of your flesh and the death of your ego, sir, and the death of your will will lead to the transformation you're looking for in her. Here's what's interesting. That transformation will ultimately cause her to be the bride you desire. I'm not telling you what I heard. I'm telling you what I know telling you that the change you're looking for in her is not going to start with her. It's actually going to start with you. How you treat her in spite of what her attitude looks like. How you treat her in spite of what her emotions are doing will set a tone in her heart and there's going to be transformation that will take place. The 
problem is that you're waiting for her to be worthy of your sacrifice before you give it. But Christ did not wait for until we were worthy. In fact, the Bible says that while we were sinners, he died for us. He died because we were unworthy and we could not get worthy lest he died. So you waiting for her to be worthy of your sacrifice, sir, you're going about it the wrong way. So her emotions, her mood, her attitude, that will change once you change. Now, I have a hard time at times sharing stuff like this because it feels like the weight is on the man. And it's always on the man. It's always the man's responsibility. But the reality is, choose this and I let me just say this it's not fair I don't think it's right I don't think it's fair but Christ's death on the cross wasn't fair either it wasn't he didn't die because he was guilty he died because we were he died while we were sinners so while we were at our worst his sacrifice was at its best and so I, again, I'm not telling you what I've heard. I've been married 18 years. I spent a lot of time complaining about who my wife was not, and what she wasn't doing, and why she can, why why can't you do this? And why I even went as far as well. You need to. Why can't you be like so and so? None of that stuff worked. But you know what did work is me making the transition first. Me making the change first. And so, fellas, as hard as it is to, is to hear, as harsh as it is, you can't expect her to change if you aren't sacrificing. That's a hard pill to swallow. Um, I, I want to challenge us to, to come up and level up. I'm, I'm giving you my word that once you begin changing, and here's the thing, you cannot change so that she will change. You cannot sacrifice, rather, so that she will you sacrifice because it's your portion is what you are to do as a husband husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church it's your job it's my job it's my responsibility to sacrifice what I'm, so we don't do it so that she can change but here's the thing we do it knowing that it leads to her change I know that if I do what God tells me to do it will lead to her change now here's what I want you to see Look at Ephesians 5. It talks about husbands love husbands love your wives, Christ love the church. And it talks about, it goes on to talk about how this, this sacrifice, she becomes blameless. She becomes beautiful, right? She becomes spotless to Christ. And so when we sacrifice, when he sacrificed as, a, as, as our father, as our God, we as a church, as a body became spotless to him. To, we were presented to him as spotless and what I submit to you is the wife you're looking for and the wife you're wanting her to become is actually <laughs> it starts with you it starts with you it's not going to start with her she's not going to suddenly change she's not going to suddenly get it together she will not it will start you can you can be the catalyst of change you can actually have the wife you want to have. You can have the wife you desire, but you've got to build it through sacrifice. You have to establish it through sacrifice. Which means I've got to live beyond emotions. I cannot be emotional. Men, we cannot. You cannot. You can be sacrificial. Feel the emotions, but you cannot live out of your 